Hello mind mappers and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going over mini habits by Stephen Guys. Smaller habits, bigger results. And if you've ever wondered what habits really are and how you can build better ones in your life, this book is going to be perfect for you. With that, I've got an introduction for us that I believe gives us a good overview of what we can expect to learn from mini habits today. I had experimented with personal development strategies for a decade. I'm sure a lot of us can probably relate. When I accidentally started my first mini habit and the changes I made were actually lasting, I realized the prior strategies I relied upon were complete failures. When something works, that which doesn't work is exposed. The science of mini habits exposes the predictably inconsistent results of most popular personal growth strategies and reveals why mini habits are consistent. A mini habit is a very small positive behavior that, for, that you force yourself to do every day. A mini habit is too small to fail, and its nature makes it weightless, deceptively powerful, and superior habit building strategy. Mini habits will better equip you to change your life than 99% of the people you see walking around on this globe. People who so often think that they are the reason that they can't achieve lasting change. But the problem isn't with them. It's actually with their strategy. You can achieve great things without guilt, intimidation, repeated failures associated with such strategies as getting motivated, resolutions, or even just doing it. To make changes last, you need to stop fighting against your brain. And when you start playing by your brain's rules, as many habits show you how to do, lasting change actually isn't hard. So how about you? Are you getting predictably inconsistent results? Maybe you've been experimenting with personal development for decades or even just a few months. Maybe some days you're kicking butt and you're taking names and other days you're like a frog on a log. This of course is a common human experience because human beings have natural fluctuations in our motivation. But all too often, we beat ourselves up as if we're supposed to be butt-kicking Superman every single day. The problem here is, isn't that we aren't Superman. Rather, it's that we have a built-in system that expects us to be Superman every day. How many times have you cooked up a plan for tomorrow that was something that felt impossible today? Right? We're kind of in this constant state of between high motivation and low motivation, kind of going back and forth and back and forth. And that's okay, because there's times in our lives where we need that big burst of motivation. But obviously, if we're in that high state of motivation at all times, we would quite quickly burn ourselves out. It's kind of a regulating valve on our motivation and on our energy. Many habits is actually our solution to that. This system is built on making things stupid small and building up momentum. Instead of planning for Superman days, we actually plan more for the frog on a log days. We plan for the days that we have less motivation and less energy. All while making room if Superman does decide to come around. So the days that you are very motivated, we need to make room for that. We need to be able to do the things that the superhuman, the superman inside of us wants to do. Are you tired of motivating yourself through guilt intimidation, resolutions, or just doing it, this is the right place for you. I, for one, I'm not going to share my entire story right now, but I, for one, definitely got burned out from using all these different guilt techniques and trying to motivate myself in ways that just weren't sustainable. And that's one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel, to share that there's other techniques out there with all of you. With that, let's talk a little bit about mind mapping. Get the most out of these mind maps by following along. You can find the process of how I mind map, plus all 50 plus mind map templates, including this one, all at the link down below completely for free. Following along will help you learn more, remember better, and apply these books to your life, which of course is really the name of the game. Our first big idea here I call Stupid Small, and it's one of the most cornerstone pieces of the book. That's why I've highlighted it here in green. A mini habit is basically a much smaller version of a new habit that you want to form. 100 push-ups daily is modified into one push-up daily. Writing 3,000 words daily becomes writing 50 words daily. Thinking positively all the time becomes thinking two positive thoughts per day. 
you can see where we've continued to go. Living an entrepreneurial lifestyle becomes thinking of two ideas per day, among other entrepreneurial things. The foundation of many habits system is in stupid small steps. The concept of small steps is of course nothing new, but how and why they work have not adequately been dissected. Of course, small steps are relative too. A small step for you could be a giant leap for me. And saying stupid small clarifies it, because if a step, if a step sounds stupid relative to the most that you can do, it's actually perfect. So the first part of this quote, we're really looking at what our target habit is. It might be something that you've been trying to pick up on for a while or even something brand new. Maybe it's something big like eating healthier or doing more exercise, or maybe it's something simple like just reading more books. Let's take that target habit and make it stupid small together. What might that look like? Eating healthier becomes eating one vegetable a day. Doing more exercise becomes that one push-up a day we talked about before. Reading more becomes reading one page a day. And you can see that we take these big things that might feel almost insurmountable, especially on a day of low motivation, especially on the frog on a log type of a day. What we've done is we've made it easy for the frog to do the activity. So what's your target habit? You want to write this down inside of the mind map and follow along and now Make it stupid. Make it stupid small. And something might actually seem like it's too small. The one push-up a day, the one vegetable a day, the one page a day. It might seem stupid. It might seem like it's too small. But that's actually good. The point of these mini habits is to make it so that it's actually so small it's almost stupid. That way, on your worst possible day, you could do at least this one thing. This is going to help you build the consistency that habits need before you go and try and do something more difficult. Our next point is unstoppable. And this is again one of my favorite points here. The benefits from following mini habit system is surprisingly big results. First, there's a great chance that you'll do bonus reps. Remember we talked about Superman showing up before. Sometimes Superman shows up and he does the 100 push-ups even though he was only required to do the one. This is because we already desire these positive behaviors, and starting them actually reduces the internal resistance that we have to do them. The second benefit is, of course, routine, the consistency we talked about before. Even if you don't exceed your small requirement, the behavior will begin to become a mini habit. From there, do bonus reps or scale the habit up. Another benefit is constant success. This is huge. A bank may be too big to fail, but many habits are too small to fail. And so they lack the common destructive feelings of guilt and inadequacy that come with goal failure. How many times have you tried to start a new habit, tried to accomplish a particular goal, only to find out that you couldn't actually do it and feel really guilty and shameful for not being able to accomplish it? This is one of the very few systems that practically guarantee success every day thanks to potent encouragement spirals and always attainable targets. Many habits have made me feel unstoppable. Prior to starting many habits, I felt unstartable. And I have to say that I kind of echo this sentiment that Stephen is saying here. Actually, I didn't feel necessarily unstartable. I felt like I was in a good spot beforehand, and some of you might be feeling that as well. But the mini habits framework has made me able to test new things out, try new things, rather than kind of being stuck in my already ingrained, what I think of as good habits. So what I wanted to bring out here is all about going mini, bonus reps and building routines. So we talked about Superman before, just like I said. Some days he shows up and he does one push-up and then he busts out an entire workout. That's a bonus rep. The mini habit system is built for Superman. These days happen, but they aren't to be expected. Don't turn this into a, if I'm not Superman, I'm nothing kind of a game. right? If you say you only have to do one push-up, hold yourself to that. If Superman shows up, it's a bonus rep. Rather, celebrate it when it comes and know that the more it happens, the more it happens, right? The more times Superman shows up, 
the more times he's likely to show up again. And, of course, keep in mind the frog on a log that we talked about before. Some days, he's going to show up. Doing one push-up actually takes all the willpower we have. But not so much that he doesn't actually do it, right? We hold ourselves to the mini-habit no matter what. The mini-habit system is built for the frog just as much as it's built for Superman. Did that one push-up really make a difference physically? Of course not. But it did preserve his momentum and continue the habit chain. This lets us keep playing the game and find more time to pick out Superman days. So the long story short here really is that we all have these two different personas inside of us, and of course, any different variation of the two. That means that when creating a strategy, we actually need to take into account both possibilities. Build a system that helps the frog and that helps Superman. I'm willing to bet that the reason that the majority of us out there are failing things is because we're only building systems for Superman, instead of keeping in mind that we have a natural flow in energy and motivation, and that we should be preparing and systematizing for that. Our next big idea here is motion. Chances are that you will do extra sometimes. And the reason relates to basic physics. Newton's first law states that an object at rest will stay at rest unless an external force acts upon it. Number two, an object that is in motion will not change its velocity unless an external force acts upon it. So can you see how this relates to many habits? Once you take the first step, you're officially in motion. You'll find, as I have, that once you get started, it is almost as hard to stop as it is to keep going. Add to this that nothing is more motivating and inspiring than seeing yourself actually take action. Put it together and we get a new equation. One small step plus the desired behavior equals a high probability of further steps. And this is really all about, are you going uphill or downhill? Think about 30 minutes of working out, meditation, or perhaps reading on your worst day. Doesn't that kind of feel like Sisyphus rolling his rock up a hill? It's unlikely to get very much momentum going because it's just so difficult, or at the very least, it feels so difficult on your worst days more likely you're going to talk yourself out of actually even starting. So of course you're not going to build up any momentum. Now think about one push-up, one breath, or reading one page. That feels like a downhill, right? Once you're there, you may get, you may as well do at least one more, or maybe you're going to do two more. This gives us a chance to build momentum in the moment as well as in the long term. The bonus is that we're very unlikely to talk ourselves out of something so small. Science shows that getting started is the most important part. Often we believe that we need to be in the right mood, feel inspired, or have the energy to get something done. Really though, what we need to do is to just get started. The Procrastination Equation, a book that we've done a review on on this channel, I'll leave a link down below, tells us that our mood follows our actions just as much as vice versa. So if you don't feel like doing something, if you simply start, your mood changes to feeling like doing the thing, which is pretty amazing. If you just get started, you can start to build up a little bit of momentum, and that is what motion is. Our next idea is machine. Mini habits are self-efficacy generating machine. And importantly, you can get started successfully with zero self efficacy. Your daily successes will train you to have high self-efficacy. How can you not believe in your ability to do one push-up a day? You can do it between these two sentences, or this exact sentence now. And this amounts to strengthening your self-efficacy through practice. Many habits double as training for believing in yourself. So how is your self-efficacy, or your self-belief, is another way to go about it one's belief in one's own ability to succeed. This is huge and often overlooked. What's step number one in succeeding? 
Of course, it's believing that you can succeed or else you won't get started at all. That is what self-efficacy is all about, believing that you can accomplish something. But of course, we're not here for the rah-rah believe in yourself that we sometimes run into in personal development. The real thing, self-efficacy, confidence or belief through action. You have to prove to yourself that you are going to be able to do what you say you're going to do. Want to build real trust and confidence in your abilities? Of course, you need to show yourself that you can accomplish things over and over. And after you accomplish one thing, it's going to be more likely that you'll believe in yourself and accomplish the next thing. And of course, the upward spiral or the theory of motion starts to kick into play. The tiny habits method is perfect and designed exactly for this. So first thing we do is we need to set a tiny habit and think it's almost too easy. And then we try to do that habit day, day in and day out and realize that it's sometimes hard. Slowly but surely, we show ourselves that we can do it to g- and gain confidence to do even more. And what does that look like uh, versus goal setting, right? You can set, and accomplish, set a goal that you think will be hard to accomplish, and if you buckle down, you'll make it. This is kind of the normal goal that we generally set, right? Step number two is realize that every day, despite your best effort, it just doesn't feel like you're moving forwards towards the goal. It doesn't feel like you're moving towards the objective. Number three is eventually you decide that this just isn't worth it. The daily effort, if you can't actually get a little bit of momentum and movement towards your ultimate goal. So I think really what we're doing is we're coming from two different sides. Number one, let's make it as easy as we possibly can. And number two, let's do our absolute best to detach from the outcome. Don't worry about what this one push-up is going to do for you in the grand scheme of things because we both know it's not going to be that much. But if you can detach from the outcome, that relieves so much stress that it's going to allow you to continue winning, which just so happens to be our next big idea. It's far more mentally energy efficient to break things down into small components that are easily mentally digestible and less stressful. The goal of losing 100 pounds in a year is a constant energy drain and a burden. And with this goal, it's possible to lose 50 pounds and actually still feel like a failure. How many of us have been there? We get halfway towards our goal, and instead of looking how far we've come, we look how far we have left to go. Why would anyone be interested in that? One workout feels like a drop in the bucket. And it's, especially in the grand scheme of your massive goal, it's hard to feel good after a workout when it represents almost nothing compared to what your goal is. With many habits, though, willpower is preserved as much as possible. Every step you take feels actually like a success. And going beyond your goal feels even better than that. It's a system that makes you feel like a winner because people who feel like winners act like winners. And I guess that's a good question to ask ourselves. Do you feel like a winner? This concept is directly connected to our self-efficacy machine from before. But just to reiterate, people who believe they can do it almost always do. How do we gain that belief? First, we must do something worthy of our own belief. And preferably, we should do that thing every single day. So let's take a big goal, like the lose 100 pounds we talked about before, and break it into something that we can win at every single day. Lose 100 pounds becomes take a five minute walk every morning. Get a promotion becomes show up five minutes early and organize your day. Have a better relationship with your spouse becomes saying I love you and giving them a hug when they walk in the door after work. These goal transformations not only make us daily winners, which makes us a heck of a lot more happy day to day, right? If we're winning on a day, we feel a heck of a lot better than we're 50% of our way to our goal after seven months. But it also puts our focus on what we can actually control. I know it sounds weird, but you don't actually have control over your ability to lose 100 pounds. You only control your ability to exercise and to eat healthy. Why then do we focus so much 
on what's outside of our control. Often, it's because of fear or guilt, or because we're used to those states of mind. Maybe that's a longer video. On to our final point, which is everyone's favorite comedian, Jerry. Jerry Seinfeld, to be specific. He appears to have been a pioneer of many habits. He famously remarked each day on his calendar with a big X if he completed his joke writing task. He recognized that daily progress was the key to forming a habit and improving his craft of telling jokes. He first told young comedian Brad Isaac about his productivity secret before a show one day. Brad wrote about Seinfeld's response in an article for Lifehacker. After a few days, you'll have a chain. Just keep at it and the chain will grow longer every single day. You'll like seeing the chain, especially when you get a few weeks under your belt. You only, <laughs> your only job is to not break the chain. This is a good summation of many habits. We don't want to break the chain. So what do we do once we have our mini habits plan in place? Well, create a chain is a good next step. The chain could be a check on the calendar, of course, like Jerry does. It could be a digital to-do list or really anything else that you can think of that you're going to see every single day. But the idea here is to give yourself a visual cue of your accomplishments. This not only reinforces that self-efficacy piece that we talked about before, but it also visualizes our momentum. We can see that our self-efficacy machine is working, and we can see that we have motion towards our goal. Of course, we have to remember what Newton said from before. Getting things done requires a good deal of momentum. Momentum requires stringing a lot of good days together. And Jerry's calendar chain is a good representation of momentum, so we can look back and see how far we've come. Plus, humans have a weird avoidance to breaking change that we can use to our advantage. So give it a try for yourself. First, think about what you want to accomplish, your big goal that we talked about before. And now, what mini habit do you need to get there? And of course, find a way to make yourself a chain, whether it's on a calendar, whether it's a digital note. However, you're going to be able to create the chain and see it every day is totally up to you. But creating a chain is kind of the last piece for mini habits. I want to thank you for being with me here today. Again, you can get all of the mind maps completely for free on my website, as well as check out some of the courses that I have there. I currently have courses on mind mapping, learning, habits, and I'm sure there'll be much more by the time you look at this. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one.